Welcome back to the Hot Shop. My name is Davin, and I'm a glass blower. Today, we're going to be making some optic tumblers. That's where, well, you'll see what it's like when we get into it. But we're going to make it a little more difficult on ourselves. We're not just going to make any old optic tumbler. We're going to try to make some pint-sized glass optic tumblers. Um, as always, this video is going to have two versions. The original version that's just the process from beginning to end with the wonderful sounds of the studio in the background. And the second version, which probably drop in a week or so, that is me narrating over that video, talking about why I'm doing what I'm doing, and why what is happening is happening. For all you aspiring glass blowers out there that want to learn to do optic tumblers or optic twists, this is the video you've been waiting for. Like and subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Okay, so as always, we are going to start with the gather. Uh, this is going to be a single gather, believe it or not, single gather, pint-sized optic twist glass. Um, my goal with this was to kind of push how large of an object I could get with a single gather of glass. Uh, there's a lot of advantages with a single gather. One of them is that the glass, if you have gathered evenly, should be evenly heated. Unlike if you make a double dip where you might have some um, hotter spots. So I pop the bubble, I just trap some air in the pipe and uh, then it pushes itself through the soft glass. Spin it around. My goal here is to create a tube where the glass is even and fairly thin on the end. That tube is going to be lowered into the stamp mold or dip mold, um, what's commonly called an optic mold. You can see two of them there. It's really important when you're pressing into an optic mold, that the ribs go all the way up onto the moil, um, past the glass th uh, that is on the blowpipe. So it's, it's on the blowpipe. The lines are already way up on the blowpipe because you see as I twist this, they get pulled back off of the blowpipe so that all the ribs are in the bubble. But it's critical that when you start, those ribs go all the way up to the blowpipe. You can see our foot pedal system in action here. I'm stomping on that foot pedal, which is um, pushing about two and a half pounds of uh, compressed air um, into the blowpipe and then into the bubble. So that shaking you see is actually what I realized later is my phone was glitching out because of the heat, the radiant heat coming off that thing. The same reason why I'm tilting my arm over to one side. Yeah, it's like just messed with the stabilization of the phone and uh, I didn't know it until after I looked at the footage but I actually had to reset my phone to, um, to get this to stop. Um, it kind of stopped on its own but Resetting it really seemed to fix it for later on. A shot of heating it in the hole and getting everything hot again so that we, and I actually got it a little too hot there. I don't know if you could see it wrinkled a little bit. And the only thing you can do right there to rectify that is just to blow the bubble up a little bit more to kind of get that wrinkle to come out. And um, it's not, it's not the best solution uh, because you end up thinning the bubble over much. Luckily, I was still able to maintain enough of a base. You see here, this is how I start to flatten the bottom as I like to cut in the line where the base is going to be and then slowly start folding it in. That compresses that glass on the bottom and gives me more thickness to punty to. So flattening the bottom. Um, and I gotta say that at this point, you know, I'm just moving through the process and I was like, okay, you know, this isn't great. Um, I just wanted to see what size I could get kind of first try at this. Uh, I'm making a punty here. Um, this project is gonna become, become all about the punties. It's really critical that you're making a, a good punty that has a nice um, tip that will come off easily but also stay on for the duration of this process. It has to be a very delicate punty though because um, the size, uh, the thinness of the bottom is such that uh, if you use a thick punty with a lot of mass um, or a bigger punty rod with a lot of, um, with a bigger punty, 
that mass of heat would weld the pointy to the bottom of the cup very easily because it's so thin that it's really easy to weld that pointy on um, forever. So here we go, giving an attempt at straightening. Again, when I'm straightening it, if I have a wonky kind of cup like this, I'm trying to find a kind of aggregate of all the parts that are off and sort of average out the things that are off. Tweezering out the rim. And that was not, if you can guess, <laughs> supposed to happen. It's quite surprising. That hasn't happened in a long time to me. Um, we are using a new glass. Uh, we're using um, System 96 from Oceanside. And uh, it's really nice for punties to come off. It's much better than the Crystallica that we had been using. Uh, but it's, it, it threw me for a loop with that. I think it's the, the, the size of the object, not having my timing quite right when I puntied it, and probably not flashing my punty long enough each time. The punty just got really cold. Um, so you can see here again when I dip this, when I come out, those ribs go all the way up onto the moil, so that when I grab this and twist, um, the tibs, the ribs go, uh, the, the twists go all the way up and you don't end up with a clear untwisted spot near where you're going to put your jack line. So I'm blowing while I do this. That's one of the advantages of the foot pedal. If it wasn't for the foot pedal, I would have my assistant blow very gently um, as I'm twisting it. So even this one as I was making it, you know, it's better. It's definitely more even. It's more of a cylinder. Um, the, the, the twists are more even, but still even this one, if you look really closely, you can see that there's a more, a more gradual twist toward the top where the jacks are right now, and a more intense, tighter twist toward the bottom. And that's because I pulled out too soon while I was twisting. If you go back and watch that, you can sort of see that I make a tapered shape. And you can't twist a tapered shape evenly. It's got to be a cylinder when you're twisting it. Making a nice jack line here. This jack line actually came out really well. Um, and you can sort of see that there's a move there where I made uh, a kind of a hourglass shape for that neckline. Pulled it out a little bit. That's going to, for pieces like this that are really thin, that buys me a little extra time after I punty it and I go back in the hole. If I've got a really um, sort of really sharp line that doesn't have that kind of um, concave form, it is very likely to crack. If I just kept my jack straight up and down and I didn't make that. I like to put in the bottoms of my pieces like this by establishing where the bottom is going to be and folding the bottom in. And if you think about that hemisphere of glass that was in the bottom and it's now, um, now more of a point, that glass is being compressed. As I'm folding it in, it has to go somewhere. There was a whole lot of surface area there. So it's actually one way of compressing uh, that glass and thickening it up. So if you, if you have blown out the bottom a little too thin, it can be a really nice way to thicken it back up um, in preparation for receiving that punty. Uh, I'm blowing while I'm doing that to keep it from just crumpling inward. I'm blowing a little bit. Um, as I'm flattening it, so right here I'm pushing that foot pedal, blowing it a little bit, and then I take my time, use the back of the jacks and indent that little area. This time you can tell I'm doing it a little different, I'm using calipers. Um, while I was letting my phone reset because it had overheated and was glitching out and the camera had lost stability, I looked up the appropriate uh, dimensions of a, of a pint glass and it's six inches tall, three and a half inches uh, wide at the rim and two and a half inches wide at the base. So that's what we're going for. That's what those caliper dimensions um, are giving us. So I was a little hesitant with that punty there um, after the last time, but that, that broke off nicely. Much better, much better start to getting a nice pint glass this time. So that heat there, I get the whole thing hot, punty and everything. I'm warming up the tips of my tweezers so that I can straighten the bottom of this one. I don't need to do much, just 
weight to the bottom part is high and then lift up and kind of twist it a little bit um, to try to help center. You kind of get one shot at that. The way I make my punties, you kind of get one shot at that. But um, it can be a huge help. Uh, yeah. So that was a really long heat. That heat there, that edit, is probably a minute and a half maybe um, because you're reheating that cold glass in the front and you want to get it really soft. So same thing here, I want to draw it out a little longer and then now we got to trim. You almost always have to trim optics with shears um, because yeah, uh, because that's the best way to cut right through those ribs and keep the ribs going all the way to the top. Uh, again, not supposed to happen. Um, just didn't have my timing down on, on either bringing the punties, like I need to flash my object longer before I punty it so that it's, it's warmer on the bottom. Um, when, you, when you're punting objects, you really want to have a cold bottom and a hot punty and maybe just the bottom is too cold and I'm making too delicate of a punty. Um, but yeah, let's uh, guess, uh, let's try that again. So here we go, third time's a charm maybe. So uh, you can see that this twist is coming out way better. Look how even or much more even that twist is. Um, and it's because I didn't, I twisted as I pulled instead of just pulling and then twisting. And that allowed me to, to keep all the ribs going all the way up. And you can see that was working harder too. I was able to inflate that bubble quite a bit. Now that little bump on the bottom, that thick spot, you want to get rid of that. If you leave that, you end up with this weird little, I don't know, nubbin that's on the bottom of your cup that when you flatten the bottom, you push it into the bottom and it just makes a weird little space. It's a nice thing to, to punty on, but it's it's not ideal. So uh, I, I've seen a lot of people do this, crimp it down right there. You can see I'm setting up that taper um, after doing the last couple of them. I've learned what that angle needs to be that's gonna set the base at two and a half inches wide and then hopefully the rim, which I haven't got to yet, at three and a half inches wide. Um, see there, I'm angling my jacks inward again, just to keep myself away from the heat. Uh, I'm not too worried about that piece getting off center at that point because I know I'm gonna tweezer and trim that rim so long as my sides are straight and uh, the base is, is on center, you know, we're good. So here you'll see me get rid of that. I'm blowing while I'm doing this, by the way. So you see that whole thing sort of inflate. It helps straighten it too. Um, yeah, make sure the jack line is established. And I'm actually more like pushing it on center right there rather than cutting it in any further, you know. I check with my calipers, we are two and a half inches wide. So let's uh, make sure that we got the right size up at the top. And I'm also thinning up that bottom a little bit, you know, just to make sure we got our, our length. We need that six inches of length. Every time you inflate this, uh, it can shorten the bubble. So that's why I'm putting the jacks on the side to push, make sure that the air can't go out as much as it goes down to the bottom. So this is a really good angle to see how I flatten the bottom. I'm folding it in gently blowing while I'm doing that. That's setting up where I want the base. So I'm, I'm not just pushing flat on the bottom, I'm pushing at an angle and slowly coming back to, um, you know, so I'm starting at like a 45 and it's slowly going to a 90. And so you see again there, I heated just the bottom. The bottom's already almost flat on its own, blowing very gently as I'm doing this. And then right there, dent the bottom in just a little bit. That's a place for the punty to sit. Um, and then just one last sort of shaping. This is sort of letting the bottom kind of cool a little bit. You don't want the bottom too hot. If you just punty right away with these cups and you just had that bottom super hot and flattened it and you punty right away, well, what do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna have a hot bottom and a hot punty. And, and even though I've been having the problem of these falling off, most of the time people have the other problem where they can't get it off the punty without using water or something and you, you have this sort of nasty punty mark. So I'm making a punty, I'm not showing it again, you know what it looks like. Um, 
I'm letting the piece just sit there. It sags just a little bit, but you can see that there's still a little bit of red color up on the blowpipe. That's telling me that we're still hot. Much higher angle, see that? And much less touching. One time around, that punty looks a lot better. It's got a nice, sharp connection to the bottom. It's got a nice red, glow, orange glow to it. I feel better uh, about this one. I also know the end. <laughs> So here we go, same thing. Warm the tweezers so they don't crack the rim and assess whether I need to straighten the rim. And this time I, I'm like, no, we're good. We don't need to straighten the rim. When I put my tweezers down, it's hard to tell this from this angle, but I'm always putting the tips off the end of the blowpipe, of the bench, so that they don't get wax on them. You see all that weird sort of smeariness there? That's all wax. And so if I put my tweezers that are just hot down on the bench they'll get wax on them and I won't be able to do this where I can just grab and pull so when you set the tweezers down don't do what I just did there and set them on the bench set them off the edge if you tweezer and then trim right away you don't need anybody to protect your trimming from touching back onto your piece if you don't tweezer first and you just trim it'll touch so now I'm setting up a nice on center opening um, so that we can inflate that part of the bubble and change the shape of the cylinder so that we can have much less work when we're opening it. And you'll see what I mean. It raises the shoulder up and elongates the cylinder out uh, away from the base, makes it a taller cup, in other words. So here we go. This is the fun part. Open it up, man. I open down. I've, people have commented about this. I don't know why. Um, it's just what I do. I got long arms. It feels comfortable. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to set my blades a certain distance apart so that they're parallel right there. So that I can get a straight-sided object. I got the right size. Now I just need to clean up the shape. In case you're wondering, as I'm editing out these heats, you heat about 20 seconds or more for every 15 seconds of work in case you're curious based on our holes and everything so a couple of taps I do like taps because I want to start the cracking process making small fractures in the punty and then it releases instead of hitting it really hard and maybe breaking the piece I'm picking up this ultra thin object with unheated Kevlar mitts or, or uh, tongs, which shows you don't need to preheat gloves. You're just burning them up. And there we go. That is. Well, here, I, I wanted to show this. So look at the tip of that punt. You can see there's this angle coming off the tip. The tip broke off flat. That angle um, is what starts the crack. And because I had touched that angle with the cold thing. Yeah, in, anyway, here you go. Uh, optic tumbler twist all the way to from the bottom right to the rim you got ribs all the way up to the rim and uh, my first test to see if it holds a full 16 ounce pint now I know it's a bunch of people are gonna say um, why'd you pour it like that um, I like to pour my beers where I get out a lot of foam I don't normally do that but I think it looks super cool um, the foam settled within a few seconds and I drank it and enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, like and subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers.